Okay, well, welcome back. Um, we're going to go through um, how to solve formula, how to use the double angle formulas to solve equations. This is a little offshoot of the sum and difference formulas that you may be watching in the previous videos, or if you're taking pre calc or trig, um, double angle formulas are correlated um, to the sum and difference formulas and can be used to solve various formula or various problems and are used to simplify and other things and make trig a little bit easier. So without further ado, these are the double angle and half angle formulas that you might want to write on your um, in your notes. Um, they're used a lot to, like I said, to solve for x and solve for various different equations. So make sure that you're just familiar with how to use them. Okay, so without further ado, we want to solve for x here. We're going to try to find all the solutions to this particular equation. And in order to do this, um, one thing we'll notice is we have sine of 2x plus cosine of x. Now, in previous times when we solve for x, is that uh, we have, we look at our b values. And normally there's one equation with a b value greater than 1. Uh, but in this case, we have a b value greater than 1. And we have right here a b value equal to 1. Well, this is a very difficult problem to solve for without your calculator. And so to help us solve this with our calculator, uh, or without our calculator, we're going to use the double angle formula. It's called double angle because this value right here, the B value is equal to 2. That's when you know you have a double angle formula. So sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, tangent of 2 theta. These are the half angle formulas when you have x over 2 um, and so on and so forth and when you solve them. So to do this, we're going to notice that we have sine of 2x. And so since we have sine of 2x, we're going to realize that that's a double angle formula. And we look at our little sheet right here. And you might want to memorize this or just have this easily handy. Uh, I'll just tell you in my math class, I usually let students use a little cheat sheet of the double angle formulas. They're not used very commonly, but they are important to be able to know how to use. So with this, we're going to have 2 sine of x, or in this case, x cosine of x because x is our, like our theta. We're then going to put plus cosine of x, so that's our double angle, and that's going to equal 0. Now from here, now we're just going to do simple run mill algebra. Okay, so we look at here, we see we factor out a cosine, so we're going to factor out cosine of x, we then have 2 sine of x plus 1, and that equals 0. From here, we're going to do just like we did in the other previous problems. We have cosine of x equals 0. We have 2 sine of x plus 1 equals 0. And now we solve. From here, 1 is cosine equals 0. Well, it's going to be for x equaling pi over 2. And yes, we have 3 pi over 2 as well. And what we notice is that since we're trying to sign for all x values, we realize that if I draw this little picture of this um, unit circle, Right here, that's when we have a 0, and also right there when we have 0 and negative 1, and then we go back up here, and then the next one, and then down there. So we're going to add a plus pi n. So every pi over 2 plus pi n, okay, or I guess you can put minus pi n as well, that's what's going to equal our values. From here, when we have this, we're going to solve for sine of x. So we have sine of x. We're going to subtract 1, divide by 2, and now we're looking for negative 1 over 2. Once again, sine is y, so 1 is y negative. It's going to be in the third and fourth quadrant. Uh, we have opposite negative 1, hypotenuse 2, opposite negative 1, hypotenuse 2. What's opposite that? Well, that's going to be a multiple of reference angle 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. So here... We're looking at the third quadrant, third quadrant. So we're going to have uh, 7 pi over 6 is one of our angles. And then we have another one right here whoop, in the fourth quadrant. And that's going to be 11 pi over 6. Um, for this, because we're going to be going around each time a whole 2 pi to get to the next one. Um, there is no single pi, so we're going to add and subtract a 2 pi n for all our solutions. We're going to add and subtract 2 pi n for that solution as well. Okay, so looking right here, 
we solve this and we realize that we have pi over 2 plus or minus pi n. And then we have for our other remaining solutions are all going to be there. Okay. So that is how you can use a double angle formula. And how do you know when you use it? When you see a b value of just 2 and you have a b value here of um, 1. That's usually when we use it. And then we look at our little chart, take it out, and simplify it. Okay. Well, I hope this helps you out on how to use the double angle formula. Uh, yeah. Good luck and God bless the rest of the problems.